Welcome to HealthyAyurveda.com. I'm Dr. Mike Dhaliwal, Vedic Sage. Today we'll take a more in-depth look at the management of Vata Dosha. According to Ayurveda, all matter is made of the five great elements called Panch Mahabhutas. The five great elements being ether, air, fire, water, and earth. And as we know, Vanta is predominantly that of the ether and air elements. And being so, Vata has the qualities of dry, light, cold, rough, subtle, and mobile. So, even with this understanding, it allows us to apply two basic principles to help manage various Vata conditions. One, avoiding and eliminating that which is causing the imbalance. And two, using substances which possess the opposite qualities. For example, if the dry quality is increased, this may cause dehydration and dry skin, for which it's intuitive to manage with the opposing quality. One would apply oil to dry skin to help moisturize and hydrate the skin. Excess light quality may cause excess weight loss, insomnia, or sense of ungroundedness and lightheadedness. Therefore, one should consider something which is heavy and grounding. Excess cold quality of vata dosha may cause pain and stiffness within the muscles and joints. And naturally, one would consider applying a warm compress to sore muscles. All of these examples illustrates how using the opposing quality to that which is increased helps to manage the underlying dosha imbalance. Now, what's interesting is that Ayurveda explains a sequence for which Vata increases within the body. For example, Vata initially increases within its own sites and produces a disliking for things which increases Vata dosha and a liking for that which helps to pacify Vata with opposing qualities. This is the inherent intelligence of the body seeking a state of balance or homeostasis via the two principles. However, If one continues with a vata-provoking lifestyle and vata continues to increase, vata will begin to spread to different parts of the body, revealing its qualities through various signs and symptoms, along with the individual not feeling well. So, a large part of helping to manage vata conditions is simply prevention. For example, following a proper dinacharya or ritucharya, helping to prevent conditions of increased dosha through diet and lifestyle considerations. However, overlooking such lifestyle considerations and instead overexerting oneself with stress and strain leads to exhaustion and further increases and aggravates vata dosha. Factors which increase vata dosha are described by Shushruta with examples such as overexertion with physical exercise, excess sexual indulgence, or even too much study. All of these physical, sexual, and mental activities leads to exhaustion, which increases vata dosha. So, a practical way of helping to balance vata dosha would be to avoid such exhausting activities. Instead, one would be encouraged to rest and relaxation. Also, Food which has pungent, bitter, and astringent taste, food which has cold potency, and food which has light and dry qualities tends to increase vata dosha. Therefore, one should avoid foods such as dry and raw vegetables, avoiding legumes, dals, beans, peas, etc. Instead, one should consider food which has predominantly sweet, sour, and salty taste, food which has hot potency, and food which is unctuous, heavy, and nutritious. Ayurveda explains two kinds of management. Shamana, which is palliation in helping to reduce excess dosha, and Shodhana, which is more curative, which helps to remove and eliminate excess dosha. Ayurveda gives six general modalities in helping to correct various underlying imbalances. These are broadly categorized into two functions, that which is reducing or catabolic, such as langana, rukshana, and svedana, and that which is nourishing, expansive, or that which is anabolic, 
for example, Brimana, Snehana, and Stamana. So, going back to the elementals and looking at the qualities of Vata Dosha, we've mentioned Vata as being dry, light, cold, rough, subtle, and having mobile qualities. Therefore, the first line of management for balancing excess Vata Dosha is applying the opposing qualities of dryness with oiliness via Snehana and balancing excess quality of lightness with heaviness via Brahmana. So this is the basic premise of management from an Ayurvedic perspective. However, before jumping to this conclusion, one must first consider whether Vata is involved with Datukashaya or depletion of bodily tissue, which in theory is more simplistic in management. For example, in a condition of Nirama Vata, which is increased Vata Dosha without the presence of Ama and is associated with the depletion of bodily tissue or a catabolic state, this condition is predominantly that of excess light and dry qualities of Vata and therefore would benefit from Santarpana or Brimana Chikitsa using heavy and unctuous qualities for management. This involves a diet which is nourishing, warming, and unctuous. For example, foods such as wheat, brown rice, or basmati rice. Dairy products are nourishing. Milk and ghee is advised. Sweet and unctuous herbs are recommended. Or tonic herbs such as ashwagandha, shatavari, and bala are useful. Oiliation or snehana helps to balance excess dry quality of vata dosha. Four main general types of oils include ghee, vegetable oils, muscle fat, and bone marrow. For example, oil can be consumed orally through food and drink. Oil can be applied externally as an oil massage, which is called abhyanga. Abhyanga, for managing vata dryness, it's recommended to use sesame oil. And oil can be administered rectally as an enema called basti. However, if vata is increased and associated with ama, this creates a condition for which vata becomes stagnant, having an obstructive nature, and tends to be far more pathologic. This stagnation of vata dosha needs to be managed differently than just brimana, which would worsen the clinical condition. Instead, one must first remove the obstruction causing stagnation of vata dosha. Signs and symptoms of samavata is associated with constipation, sluggish and impaired digestion, one feels sleepy and drowsy, and one has a sense of heaviness. Samavata is also associated with bloating, colicky pain, with fatigue, and generalized body ache. Therefore, since many of these symptoms are associated with impaired agni and the presence of ama, dipan pachana is required first. Dipana helps to improve agni and pachana is required to help digest and neutralize ama. Interestingly, if snehan or oiliation is performed, whether it be oral consumption of ghee or the external application of oil, this will make sama conditions worse. Instead, first requirement is Deepan Pachan, and one may want to consider Snehan with Vishagarbha and then Tapaha Swedana. So, once the obstructive component is removed, we can then attempt to remove and eliminate aggravated Vata through Shodhana, for example, Panchakarma, specifically Basti, which helps to remove and eliminate excess Vata Dosha. The premise of this concept is that one of the primary signs of vata dosha is the colon. However, with increased and in aggravation of vata dosha, vata moves from the GI tract to the peripheral tissue or datus. However, for proper elimination of vata, we need to have it return back to the GI tract and then further remove and eliminate vata via basti. Jetika states that of all the methods explained, basti or enema is the method of choice for managing vata conditions. And this is likened to cutting the root of a tree, which results in the automatic destruction of the rest of the tree. 
Okay guys, this video provided some therapeutic principles on how to manage vata dosha. Hope you've enjoyed and until next time, be well.